Greetings all and welcome to week seven. This is the uh, last push. Um, I wanted to begin in a very general way here. Um, this week we're going to be discussing KOSs, which stand for Knowledge Organization Systems, and they have a long history. Um, they don't just begin, you know, of course, with the web. The idea of the web, the metaphor of the web, which is, you know, maybe like a radiating spider web, uh, <clears throat> probably is very, very old. Uh, here is a uh, uh, what's called a memory theater. This is another way of organizing knowledge in the 16th century, and this is uh, uh, was a design by Giulio Camillo. And the bleachers or the uh, arena stands, each one of them represents, I think, a, a body of knowledge. Uh, <clears throat> I think these are the seven pillars of wisdom, uh, which is like the basic taxonomy for organizing um, classical knowledge, I believe. But in any case. Uh, <clears throat> KOSs. By now, we see that there are many tools for building websites. You'll develop your own preferences for FTP clients. Mine happens to be something called Fetch. Uh, HTML, HTML editors, my favorite is Dreamweaver, uh, as is my favorite code validator. It's really convenient when it's built in to the uh, HTML editor. But Dreamweaver requires a Creative Cloud subscription, and you may um, <clears throat> work for or work with people who um, you know prefer open source software and so I want you to know that there are free uh, what you see is what you get editors like SeaMonkey. This week we'll continue to apply user interface principles in an edit, uh, editing tool in this case hopefully uh, Dreamweaver and we'll provide feedback for our website's design navigation and functionality and there's a couple of questions I'd like you to think about <clears throat> What are some of the most popular web coding tools? Why is it important to be familiar with different web development tools? And is there a single tool that will work for every web coder? My answer to that was probably not. In the readings, uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, <coughs> knowledge organization systems uh, more in depth. And then uh, DOM, the DOM, what is the DOM? What are selectors? Chapter 7 of Mastering HTML5 and CSS3 is devoted to knowledge organization system, that is the web. It's a really hard read. Uh, there's a lot of acronyms in it. We'll continue to develop um, <clears throat> our skills in using some of the unseen parts of web pages, such as meta tags, sitemaps, searchability, we'll talk about that, accessibility, that's an important concept. Um, we have to remember that not everybody uh, is equally abled, um, yet everybody has to view the web. It's such an essential part of our lives. And of course, adaptability, which primarily focuses on uh, format, screen format. Chapter 4 of the Book of CSS will give you some simple ways to make your website adapt to portable devices, such as smartphones. There's some simple, uh, easy ways that you can make your websites adapt to uh, smartphones or smaller screens uh, without you know writing a lot of code. Here's a quote from the uh, <clears throat> W3 Consortium, the World Wide Web Consortium. The document object model, DOM, is a platform and language neutral interface that allows programs and scripts to dynamically access and update the content, structure, and style of a document. Now, <clears throat> you'll be asked a couple questions about selectors, and so here's some information for you them here. Selectors can be separated into two categories. Um, <clears throat> the first category contains class, type, and attribute selectors. The second category contains pseudo-selectors that provide access to an element's subparts. And for example, um, here's some pseudo-selectors. <clears throat> uh, selectors always have a colon, by the way. That's how you can t distinguish them. First line, first letter. So you can tell that that on the first line, say, of a paragraph, uh, the first letter needs to be an inset cap. You know, that's how I can see or formatting type that way. In any case, here are some um, <clears throat> other pseudo-class selectors. You'll be asked some questions about those. It's good to have a rough idea what they are. Then you'll be exploring Dreamweaver. Hopefully you were successful in uh, <clears throat> installing it last week. And uh, I want you to, first of all, remember, remember uh, to back up our files. Before we begin working on our websites this week, 
Please back up your files of your current website before opening them in Dreamweaver. Then make the desired changes using the Dreamweaver interface. Uh, we really do not want any tragedies. Play freely with Dreamweaver once you're assured that you have a backup of it. And then upload your improved websites to GeoCities and provide a link to me along with a short Word document. And it can be short. Uh, that explains the changes you made with Dreamweaver. This assignment's graded pass fail, so it's, you know, open ended. And then the most difficult uh, is, of course, getting our um, websites up to our peers with enough time for them to give us feedback. And, and many of you in this class have been uh, very generous with your feedback. You've embedded images. You've helped each other with code. Uh, I've been very impressed and also very grateful because it's a difficult class to teach. Um, and uh, any, any help that you offer each other uh, really is, um, is, is a boon to the class. So I've, I've been impressed with the feedback you've given each other. Um, <clears throat> I know it's the end of the term and uh, it's also, you know, tax time, etc. So uh, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, be as generous as you can with feedback. Know that I'm available and uh, don't hesitate to email or um, uh, call me uh, if you need answers. I miss emails, uh, and so, you know, be persistent. I, I'm not ignoring you. Uh, have a good week.